Hello friends, got another beautiful day for another video. Hope you can hear me well. We have some city work going on in the background, so uh, I still couldn't miss this opportunity for such a beautiful day to be working on my trees. We have something a little different today than I normally have. We gotta do some work on a conifer. Today, we have a little spruce. This guy, I call him my little stowaway. <laughs> I just call him that because me and my wife took a trip to Oregon, which is uh, the state right next to us. And I went to Home Depot and I got this tree for free on Arbor Day, I believe it was. And the funny part about it is, this tree came from Idaho. <laughs> and that's where we drove from. So I called my little stowaway. We brought him back from Oregon, back to Idaho, where he originated from. And so I had him for a year. He was like, maybe someone's whistling at me. Maybe it wasn't me. Anyways, about a year. This guy was maybe about that big. One of those little Arbor Day seedlings. He's grown quite a bit. He survived the winter really well. He's got a thicky old trunk going on. I mean, for a little seedling guy. So, he had a root. Root start. Yeah, you know, the roots were about that long. I cut like maybe that much off when I first put in the pot. So today we are going to pull this out of the pot, see what the roots did over last summer and the winter. We're gonna do some corrective root work. Then my brother and his lady gave me this cool pot. And it's an unglazed pot. It's not a bonsai pot, but it will work perfectly for this training pot. So, let's get to it. Now, I'm not going to cut anything on the top of this. My plan for this, oh wow. That's quite loud. I hope you guys can still hear me. Oh, that's irritating. Well, okay. If it gets too bad, I'll just do this root pruning and stuff, and I'll put some music on in the background. Hopefully it doesn't get too bad. So, here we go. Alright. Basically, we're going to do the same thing as we do with all of our other videos. We're going to try to pull it up. Nice and easy. Not too bad, not too bad. This was a mixture of diatomaceous earth and pumice. Once again, I'm sorry about the noise. I didn't know that it was going to be so bad. So we'll set this aside. Hey, it, it, it's springtime. Comes with the territory. Okay, so. I'm not gonna talk. I'm just gonna go through the root process, so. Let's just rake it out. It's still kinda frozen, I guess. Let's try something. 
I'm gonna run some water on it. Cool. That should work. Yeah, all right. See, it's almost, uh, it's getting close to 40 something degrees out right now, but for some reason this stuff is still kind of cold. But, oh wow, yeah. They didn't really spread out as much as I thought they would have. They've been in here all summer. So, it's okay. It's okay. Still some nice roots there. You can still see what I'm doing. So if it gets too loud, turn the volume down. You can still see what I'm doing. So, weird. There's just a mass of roots here. Well, that's a bunch of their old uh, potting mix. Kind of just work it out, I guess. Nice, nice fibrous roots. With a little bit of mica in there, it's all shiny. Pretty. Okay, well, that helped clear it out quite a bit. Let's see. Let's break it out a little bit. Gosh, I gotta take my sweater off. Yes, I'm a proponent of Mountain Dew. <laughs> Just kidding. I drink Mountain Dew as one of my drinks that I need to give up. Okay. That's some nice roots. See? Nice radial ones that if I can get them untangled we'd have a pretty good root plan for a start. Just try to untangle them a bit. Yeah, there we go. Kind of tearing a little bit, but they will grow back. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see what's going on. Wow. So far doesn't have a really ugly tapper yet so far it's pretty interesting okay okay I'm starting to get to see what's going on okay let's see what's going on here brother Wow. 
This is beautiful. Okay. Let me show you this. Yeah, that's looking nice. Looking nice. It's giving me a lot of options to work with here. Lots of options. I like that. Better have a lot of options. Okay, let's turn this tree upside down here. Let me get a tool. First, let's kind of rinse these off a little bit better. If I'm going to bring my tools in here, I want to have it clean so I'm not dulling my tools anymore than I have to. Okay. Because I see where I'm going to cut this. Okay, all right, so we got some nice, nice stuff to work with. Hmm, okay, let me get a tool here. Just use these, I'm just going to use the branch cutters here because they'll work pretty good. And I want to come in here. Make this initial cut here. Pull these out. Okay. See what I did? I cut about that much off. Now. That's all I'm going to take off at first. This is the first ever root printing of this tree. That's all I'm going to take off of that tap root. See what's left? Kind of curves, but then we get, comes down straight. It gives me enough. See, I can get some more roots growing in there. Get a really nice, nice root base going there. Now, of course, what I've said before. Let's get real, guys. Let's get some scissors here. We don't really need all this. So... We'll just give it a little haircut. But we'll keep some of them long, like that. So when we replant this thing, we'll have some roots to help stabilize this tree in the pot. And when we put it in there, we'll do our best to spread them out so it'll sit more flat. Now I want this to be a formal upright. Right now, I just want it to grow. And I'm not doing anything to the top. I might not do anything to the top for a couple of years. So, I'm going to be patient with this guy. So, since we did that, let's get the pot ready. And before we do that, I want to... I'm going to keep this soil here because it's fairly new. It's my mix and I'll use it again for something. Maybe not a new tree. Maybe I'll sterilize this and I'll use it for something else. But no need to waste it. Okay. Now, this has a hole, yes. Alright, let me see here. There's my bucket. I'm going to go get some soil. You hang tight for a second. And I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. So, we're going to put some soil down in this pot here. Okay. So, I'm going to mound it up in the middle. We want to leave some room around the rim. So when we water, it will stay in the pot. And then when we put moss, we want it to be below the lip of the pot. Okay, so 
These guys have never been spread out properly, so they're kind of stiff. So, I'm spreading them out. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Cool. Now, let's make sure they're not overlapping one another too much. Make sure you get these roots covered. Make sure you secure this guy down in this pot. Now he might freak out a little bit because he's like, oh my gosh, you just cut my roots majorly. But, you know, you gotta grow, brother. You are changing. Change is good. Okay. Yeah, his roots are pretty stiff. Probably gonna have to mound this up a little bit. And then, probably gonna have to put a rock on here to help him understand what's happening. Yeah, okay. Because I want this to be uh, upright. So let's take our chopstick. Now, this is great for, you know, you'll see the soil disappear down in the pot because you're packing it down in. It's also building a structure around this tree. You know, it's packing the rocks down where they need to be, getting rid of those air pockets. You don't always see me doing it in the videos. But believe me, I do it. Because if you don't, your trees will fall over a lot of the times. So, you need to get this worked in. Some people really like doing this part. Some people really don't. I really don't know. I just do it because I want my trees to be happy and healthy. Oh, this guy's being ornery. Okay. Let's see. Well, we spread out the roots the way I wanted. Let's see. Let me go get that. I have a really cool rock. Let me see. I have a few. But before we put the rocks in, let's get some more soil in here. Stowaway. I've been excited to repot this guy. Who am I kidding? I've been excited to repot all these guys. Get them under underway. To actually get rid of these tap roots and get their roots in order. I believe this is one of the native Idaho trees that I was talking about. You know, I was talking about wanting to do a little 
thing on Idaho natives. Well, this is one of them. It's like a blue spruce, I believe. That's what said on the thing, on the little package that it was in. Okay, I think I'm gonna add a little more soil to this, but as summer progresses, I can see myself removing some because I'm also going to add moss to this and but you know I've said that a million times already but those of you that might be new to my channel or new to bonsai it never hurts to repeat a few things and if you ever have any questions put them down in the comment section and I'll get to it and try to answer it to the best of my ability. I am not a bonsai master of any sort at the moment. I will be someday though because this is quite a passion of mine. You know it's a passion of yours when you are thinking about it all the time. <laughs> when you're staring at trees going down the road you're critiquing the trees on the side of the roads and you're critiquing people's pruning jobs on big trees and you're trying to you know just stuff like that I do that a lot now and I never done that previously so okay let's get just just a little bit more soil Um, like I said, this is diatomaceous earth and pumice. Pretty inexpensive. The pumice is the expensive part. The diatomaceous earth is not expensive at all. As I've mentioned in other videos, you can grow stuff in straight DE and it can be done. The only thing about that is it holds lots of water for you. It's a good um, replacement for Akadama. But you need to learn you have to know your water because it, you can overwater. Well, with anything, you can overwater, but Diatomaceous earth, if you can't afford it, or if that's the only thing you can find, you can do it. You can grow trees in almost anything. If you can learn your proper watering techniques. So, and the good thing about diatomaceous earth is when it's dried out, it will turn white. And my tropical trees in the house... Uh, it turns white quick, so like every other day, and as it gets warmer, every day. And it will tell you, like in smaller pots, it will get white sooner. So like for someone that is a beginner, and is not so familiar, or not so... Oh, I don't know what to say, but you don't have your watering down yet. Diatomaceous earth is a good learning medium for watering. I just lost my chopstick. Ah. And with the pumice, pumice is white too. But I use the pumice in diatomaceous earth here in Idaho. I've been told that some people have lost their trees because it gets so dang hot. And like, you know, we live in a desert, so there are places where there's not as many trees around. So, anything you can do to help keep the roots cool is a good idea. And my thoughts on that were um, light colored pots 
and light colored dirt so it doesn't absorb the heat but also like for tropicals that like that heat or the trees that like the heat you know it might be a little different okay let's get this tree of water turn the camera so you can see not that people really care about watering trees on videos but I do this is part of the video for me I like watching it and I like this is a really therapeutic part for me this is one of my favorite parts believe it or not of my bonsai day is taking my water little watering can and watering each and every tree individually I don't have a watering system other than this I don't have a fancy system I don't plan on having a fancier system than this I plan on doing it by hand taking time with each tree you do it this way and you can see what's going on it's like I don't drive and since I don't drive, and I walk everywhere I go, I get to see things that a lot of people miss. Because you're going so fast down the road in your car that you never see it. So, I'm going to use the same principles with my trees take the time and just water them individually. This little stowaway is done really well. Then we go fill up this watering can again and we'll give it a little bit more of a drink. Since this is a uh, newer soil, I just like to give it a good, healthy drink. Here, after I see my other trees putting out growth, and I see this guy putting out growth, I'll, I'll fertilize this guy. And... This guy's never been fertilized before. So he'll probably be like, woohoo. It's like giving him steroids or something. But. Hmm. Looking good, brother. Got you propped up pretty well. Oh, come on. There we go. Give you a nice drink. Enjoy your new home and this new pot. Now, since I re I pruned him, his roots, I probably won't touch him for at least a year. Maybe two. I'm always on the fence on that. But... I'll at least give them a year before I touch them again. I don't know exactly when I'll prune him on the top. But I want to let a lot of these branches grow out so I have more choices. Because I want it to look like a old, old tree from like old growth forest so a lot of my trees that I have I really like the small small like mommy 
size trees. So I do a lot of littler trees, but I want to do a very tall, slender tree. And I went on vacation last summer, and I went to, uh, what was it called, Lassner's Volcanic National Park in California, I believe it was. Or, I might have got that mixed up. We went to California, and we went to Oregon. We went to a couple volcanic national forests. So, I might have got the locations mixed up. Anyways, when we went to this campground, we went to this forest, and these pine trees were so amazing. They had, like, their bark was like armor. They had like diamond shaped plates, almost like what you see on scales of a snake or a dragon, you know, my dragon stories. And I'm not sure what type of, oh, what's this? That's weird. Oh, that's where the branches are coming up. But I am hoping I'll have to look at some pictures of some spruce, but I want to get a pine tree or some sort of conifer, and I want to get the those old plates of the old bark. But I don't want it like a fat trunk. I want to you know, I want to kind of fat, but I want it to still be slender and tall, and I want to make it so miniature looking, but have it still look am amazingly old. And then, what these trees also had that were amazing is they were all burnt on the outside. So, like, they either had a fire, um, Lava came through at one time and left lava deposits. And of course, lava so hot that, yes, it probably created a wildfire in the forest as well. So, at least up to nearly six feet or higher on the trees were black, but the trees were alive. And it gave it such a crazy look. So, without killing the trees, I'm going to take a torch to them eventually. And some of them I'm going to blacken the outside of the trunks. Or trunk to give it the look of surviving a lava flow or forest fire without killing the tree. So... I've already worked on one tree like that, and it's still alive. It's over there, but it's a dwarf arborvita. There's a video of it, or um, one of the previous videos on my channel that didn't come out very well, but I will do some updates on that. I'm going to give that tree a rest because I did a lot of work on it way before I think I should have. Um, but I've been learning quite a bit over the last couple years and I think one of the best things I've learned over the last few years is being able to let my trees grow but I do know like what I just did today it needed to happen and I was able to spread out those roots like you saw so they're actually going to grow out instead of down they were growing great but they're growing straight down not what we want not what you want in bonsai you want them to grow out so this trunk can now start growing a flare so it can start looking really old okay well Thank you guys for showing up. Please like and subscribe.
um, share it on Facebook, Instagram, share it with your friends, um, comments are always welcome, suggestions, keep it nice, don't be rude, I'd appreciate it, I like to keep everything nice, um, Show me what you got. If you have a channel that you want to share, tell me to come and look at it. I'll come look at it. I'll share it. Um, I'm not exclusive to just my channel. You want me to share your channel? You want me to share your artwork? That's what I'm here for, too. So, this is Mr. Leslie with Leslie Bonsai Gardens. See you next time.